Good morning, everybody. Greg Schleter here, post run walk off, April 21st, 29 degrees. God treated us to a majestic last winter blast. Anyways, the message on my heart right now is in the aftermath of the Chauvin trial. He was convicted, of course, on three counts, and it follows a year ago, right? The events that played out on the screens of all Americans, sort of the indication of what resides in the hearts of men and women. Not only the lack of attentiveness, perhaps, to this man who died. I'm not going to get into the circumstances. He died, and that's a tragedy. But it also revealed, if you will, the toxic death taking place in the souls of, of all of us, right? It really kind of touched off uh, brokenness and wounds in the heart of humanity that spread throughout the world. Things hidden in the darkness came to light. And um, it begs the question... If that is the portrait of our humanity, what's going to make it different? What's going to make the change? I speak to you clergy. I speak to anybody who professes the name of Jesus. If we're simply staying in our comfortable bubbles, how is the world going to know? And I think it begs the question, if we're not naturally evangelizing outside of our cells, outside of our comfort zones, our Christian hot tubs, if we're not naturally evangelizing, maybe it begs the question, have we been evangelized? Because I really believe if we know Jesus Christ, if we've really encountered him, if he's really inhabited our hearts and minds, we'd be praying and connecting with him all the time. Not even just in the morning, but it would overflow. We couldn't help but uh, desire others to know Jesus. And so I ask the question, right now, can you think of somebody that you are actively, intentionally leading deeper into knowledge of Jesus Christ? How many are there that you're reaching out to beyond our comfortable places? Lay people, are you doing it? Are you moved with the heart of Christ to speak the name of Jesus, invite them into our homes, to have meals, to ask their questions, to minister to their wounds, to answer their questions and concerns for which Christ is the only supply? So obviously I throw that out there not to, to blame, but to invite us to consider the blessing because God does offer us the blessing. He offers us the blessing of his presence. He is the only supply of our poverty. And it was precisely two weeks before the George Floyd thing began last year that some of my brothers and I, a number of whom are black, if that even matters, said we want to be God's presence in public places. We just want to break out. And amazing things happened when we did. 12 or 13 different times we went into public places, went into parks and had speakers and simply were present to, uh, to pray with people. And it really was remarkable what happened there. Check it out at prayerplace.us because we want to keep doing it. And if you experience right now some, oh, that couldn't be me, trepidation, I don't know, I, that's not my thing. Well, it's precisely that, getting over that hurdle and saying yes to Jesus, getting out of the boat and walking, your eyes fixed on Jesus, that could be the very thing that will cause one person to say one day in heaven, I wouldn't have been here had you said no. Join us in the adventure at ilovemyfamily.us and say yes in joining us at prayerplace.us. We are here to uh, not simply pray the Lord's Prayer, but to be instruments of his answer. God bless you.